underway here. First half action. Ball control dead even on that run up. Ball control dead even on that run up. We're working on uh, getting the video back for you in just a second here. Stick with us. Nothing doing so far. It looks like Cincinnati looking to take the early advantage with the wall ball here. All right. Bro. Oh, quick tag gets Ginsburg out. Gets Ryan Ginsburg. After That's huge for the, the initial throw by Liming. All right, you see on the attack now. A huge hit by, by Branham again. All right, Ethan Lempo on the attack here. All righty, so kind of a slower pace than I would have expected uh, out of the jump Thank here. You. Each team kind of posturing, feeling each other out still. Cincinnati trying to stay up and get that ball when it comes off the throw line. Yep, and they do. So they'll maintain ball control. That's big. Ball control means a lot here. No count for OSU, only two balls on their side as Cincinnati has an eight to two ball advantage. Brandon McGill with another uh, well-placed throw. Ooh, just uh, this block by Miller right in front of our booth. Yeah, here. Evan Miller couldn't uh, couldn't uh, reel in that catch. All right, nice dodge there in the, on the on the bottom of your screen there by Tyler Schaefer. All right, good reset, Matt Rajinski. and a nice pump fake here on this side. Yeah, there is a strategic difference depending on venue, and that's definitely something that. You don't get it a lot of uh, in a lot of different formats, but you definitely get in uh, NCDA because every gym is a little different. And right here, the ball being back there, wall ball is is a strategy. It's a completely different game. Yeah, Cincinnati had this side in the first half against UNL, and I, I do believe it, it lends a bit of an advantage. As you can see here, you know the, the wall ball is easier to stop on the side of Cincinnati than it is on the, uh, on the Buckeye baseline. Easy block there by uh, Ryan Engelman. Probably should look for that catch. Also right in front of us, Ben Dardio with a nice throw and then he gets yep. countered immediately by Engelman in the middle. All right, the, the, the Buckeyes move up to uh, close to their attack line. Evan Utter back with a good throw. Nice dodge nice by dodge. Ethan Lemkul getting high to dodge the throw from Brett Liming, who Brett's throw just drops off the table. It looks like a, it's harder, well, maybe not harder than it, but it looks like a uh, Trevor Bauer changeup, man. It just dies. Great throw by Proska. Gets uh, gets Weber caught lacking, caught slacking, you know, he, you know, one of uh, Coach West Peter's gripes about Weber is kind of how lazy he blocks sometimes, and it was, you know, evident right there. They put a two Great throw dodge. on Kemper, who had a nice dodge. Official timeout. We got a timeout. We think there might be blood on a ball here, but we can't tell if it's fresh. Can you find, uh, get me scores somehow? Find a way to get somebody to post scores in the Discord, or at least get them to us. I want to keep people updated as we're going through. I have no idea what any scores are other than this point. Alrighty, so we're good there. That was an official timeout there. Uh, so the clocks are going to be at zero. Both teams are going to kind of feel out who's going to throw first. It looks like Cincinnati is going to be on the attack. Each team with eight players left so far, but Cincinnati with a market ball advantage, and they just go right back to wall ball here. Lemkul 
Flowing to actually try to get somebody out. Refreshing. Long cross by Schaefer. Nobody home. So a couple of quick score updates just from our first slate of games. Our first round of games, we had UC on this court, Cincinnati, taking out Nebraska, 5-2. Ohio State over Miami, 4-1. And then Penn State with a dominant victory over the Pioneers of Wisconsin Platteville, 7-1. As you would see later, Penn State on our featured court here. All right, Brett get, Lyman gets out Ethan Lemkul. Ooh, and Isaiah Montgomery. Montgomery. Gets taken out. Not paying attention to the cross. Penn State had another dominating victory on this court right in front of us, 10-0. So we'll get the rest of the scores as we can. For now, again, thank you for being here. Akron War, one of our marquee matchups. Ohio State Buckeyes, Cincinnati Bearcats. Alden Prahaska, a sophomore for uh, the Buckeyes, has come onto the scene as a pretty prominent thrower for the, for the squad. He's just staring I, down three I, uh, I expect a team throw here on the left side, or not. Coach Wes Peters called out a team throw. Uh, this must not have uh, been communicated well to him. Engelman gets tagged on the counter there. So Cincinnati maintaining ball control, but not really taking huge advantage of it. Great dodge in the corner. But that's Prohaska again. I assume we're going to call his name quite a bit in this matchup. So the Buckeyes actually maintain a one player advantage, but all Cincinnati on the ball count, which will allow them to do a few more things. That's a great stop on the Buckeye baseline. Try to keep that ball. Yeah, it's Utter back there. And they get a bounce back on the block right in front of our screen. So a couple breaks going the Buckeye way now. Oh. And a team catch. Oh, okay. That was a great throw, too, by Cincinnati. Brings That's back in Ryan Ginsburg. Ginsburg. That's huge. Ginsburg typically patrols that center area for Ohio State, so it's big to get him back in for them. Yes! Our back with a beautiful counter from the middle into the corner. So look now, one more throw. Cincinnati's on 10 clock. Nice cross there by Tyler Schaefer. Yeah, that took out the junior Mike Snyder. We got a popped ball here. Just gonna try to throw one in, keep the game rolling. That's a nice tag. Gets out a uh, rookie standout, Will Hyatt, for the Bearcats. That takes out Ziles there. And the, the Buckeyes is, are blazing their way through the Bearcats at the moment. Momentum is all on the Buckeye side right now. He's still got that man on the far side, though, Brett Liming. Couldn't reel in that catch. Oh. That's a nice cross by Tyler Schaefer. Oh, look at these dodges. Wow. Oh, and Penn State's calling him out. That's Schaefer, the freshman. He thought he, he thought he blocked that one. Nevertheless, a couple great dodges. Liming's been in this situation before. We'll see what he can dial up today. We got six Buckeyes on the lone Bearcat. The lone OG Bearcat. 
He said earlier in the day that he's comfortable in these, you know, one-man situations because they used to play with only eight guys on their roster. And so he's used to playing down a man. You know, so so that that's where his composure comes from in these scenarios. And a catch on Ryan Ginsburg brings back Brandon McGinn, another standout player for this Bearcat squad. And just like that, and just like that, that's another senior, so you've got a lot of experience on this Bearcat side. Brett Liming Brett backing down the entire Buckeye side with a pump fake. Just shows how respected this player is. Rahaska with a sneaky little cross there. Yep. I thought I thought Ohio State may try to go to more of a uh, transition type strategy, but they're still taking their time. Otterback making effective use of the wall there, turning the tables on the Bearcats a little bit. So Kemper and Liming, two very strong arms, trading throws there, each blocking though. And they're going to say he's still safe, too, yep. so. I think that's the right call. Elijah Thomas gets one right back, though, and that brings in the big, big arm freshman, Nick Kemmer. Oh, and Campbell just like gets that, taken out. Just like Elijah. that, Brett's alone again. We'll see if uh, Ohio State adjusts here. There it was. Very well executed team throw. They finally learned after they went to the well three times. So that was a very methodic, methodical point. We'll get an official's uh, time here. Really kind of even back and forth there. Ohio State had to just keep applying, applying, and applying pressure to finally break down the Bearcats. Bearcats without Corey Heitman hung in there, and Brett Liming is that dude. Yeah, confirmed. He seems to be, uh, you know, trying to do it all for his team, but you know, he's, he's got a good squad backing him up. Just some, some, some lazy catches and some, you know, not 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 good blocking kind of kind of kept the Buckeyes in this but you know props to them for coming out as hot as they did yeah I thought they'd come out with a faster pace but they were content to just play their game and play their pace credit UC for handling the pressure initially but Ohio State just stuck with it and ground them out so we'll see what adjustments UC makes now like we said they would probably play what got them here right if Ohio State forced their hand they would make adjustments, so we'll see how they come out in point two here. Yeah. So that point did take about half of the first half. We got 12.38 to go in the first half. Head ref Jason Holman, Penn State flanking him on the other side. We'll get this game started, and not a lot of action on the run-up again. And the 45, like, like baseball sled. I know, I know the reference, I'm just saying, make sure you let him know. All right, Robbie Mitchell with a good reset. It's a rookie of the month right there. That's so right. Rookie that's another, Robbie Mitchell. That's another reason these Bearcats find themselves in a championship conversation. Good stop by Ohio State. Hammer return fire. Catch by Bohaska on Weber there. Again, just in front of uh, Kemmer there, so it's all Buckeyes early. Miller misses just low in front of the Bearcat Bartholomew there. All right, we have uh, 
One ball away from no count here for the Bearcats. That count should be about even there. Rosinski gets hit on a cross. We'll have some score updates for you here in a moment. Yeah, Ohio State just firing on all cylinders. They're getting everything they want right now. Kemmer goes head hunt and misses Ziles, but the cross throw by Kemper gets him. Or maybe that was Lemko. Yeah, I believe it was Lemko. A double catch A double here catch in the corner by, by Brandon McGinn. McGinn. Oh my Lord. Right back in Jacob Weber and Matt Rosinski. All in one swing. That's a three player swing. Four player swing, that's correct. Unreal, what a back and forth matchup. If you're not watching this right now, you really need to be. I know we got college basketball on, we got other sports, but college dodgeball is where it's at today, folks. This is our own version of March Madness, the war here at Akron. That's right. Everybody jockeying for position as we hit the home stretch. Momentum is huge this time of year with uh, just a little over a month to go into the national tournament. Uh, Brandon McGinn making a highlight reel play right there. I hope that's on film and net 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 NCDA top 10 coming at you. It seems a double catch used to be kind of an anomaly back in the day, but they're happening more and more anymore. You know, people are putting more team throws on. It also depends on the format, too. All right, they're saying it was a block. Oh, is you arguing their case? When you play on a shorter court, I think it lends itself to more people being confident solo throwing, and you can get outs that way. On this bigger court, more players, there's a lot more strategy, in my opinion. So you get more team throws and coordination that way. And so there's just and Brandon more. McGinnon with a great toe tag on uh, Kemmer. It's just more opportunity for it is what I was going to close with. But yeah, McGinn, you heard on the call earlier, you guys called him out as one of the more accurate throwers in the league, and he put it on display there. Yeah, you're not going to see many Aaron throws from that player there. And a, Another and a trade, we got Ginsburg and Will Hyatt on the Bearcats. Okay. That's another Brandon McGinn tag. That McGinn's got at least two kills and the double catch in this point, so he is doing everything he can to put the Bearcats on his back right now and tie this thing up. Under nine minutes to go here. Clock not a factor. Bearcats look to reload here. That's Schaefer and McGinn right in front of the screen here. It's going to be McGinn. Another great, well-placed throw. And they're going to get that lucky bounce back there. Ball counts are even, five and five. Bearcats showing some restraint there. They wanted to go right on the attack, but kind of waited to regroup. Another reset by Matt Rosinski. He's smiling. He knows what he's doing here. Oh, and Lemko takes out Robbie Mitchell there, gets past his block. Lemko, one of those young live arms on this Buckeye team. Made a name for himself as a freshman last year. And he takes out Engelman there, so that's two in a row for him. That's some uh, mutiny on mutiny crime right there. That's right. But there, uh, there's no love lost between them in a matchup like this. And Montgomery goes down there. That's three in a row for Lemko. Schaefer gets caught running backwards and gets taken out. Buckeyes just feasting in the middle here. So one more player and the Bearcats will be down to six. You know, really that, that double catch is sticking out to me because it's been all Buckeyes other than that. And that's a Cincinnati and ball. And the ball is over. And I could see Weber screaming, imploring his sideline. Where are you guys on the count? I can't hear anything. Yeah, it's, it's huge with communication in this league because it's so loud in this gym. The courts, there's so much going on. The sidelines have to be counting with the officials to kind of keep the teams aware. All right, and Ohio State's calling a timeout. I'm assuming for a water break here. Yeah, they figured, all right, quick stoppage here. Let's get this point before half. They've got momentum. Yeah. Plenty of time, seven minutes. They don't have to rush anything. Again, big shout out to our crew here today. We've got multiple photographers. Catherine Mays right here by the booth doing some work, getting score updates for us, taking pictures. 
Chris Haas taking pictures. Sam Palumbo, <laughs> Palumbo bringing you the top notch stream all day. Big shout out to Nicholas Norman, the Penn State Nittany Lion grad student, helping us man the camera right now. It takes a village, y'all. Little self-deprecating comment there by Sam, but that's okay. All right, so Jason Holman's gonna break huddle here. There was a balls over, which was gonna stop the clock anyway. Ohio State wanted to have a little extra time to talk it through and figure out their plan of attack and make the most of this. So here they go, working left to right. We'll see what they do. Brett Lyman able to secure the catch on the team throw and does the other one. Still no count for the Bearcats, only two balls there. Correct. Nope, they do have three. They have three now. One yep. came, one went out of bounds, so I had to corral that first. So Lyman without a ball is surprising. The pass went over to his side. Yeah, Ohio State needs to try to take advantage, but then again, he's just been catching everything. Quick counter by Brandon McGinn here. Try to bring the, the Buckeyes back up to the throw line and uh, eliminate this transition play. Oh. Great catch by Styles. Lemko hung one there. I don't think he meant to do that. Nope. Brings back in uh, Will Hyatt. All right, so Ohio State has had no breaks really go their way coming out of that timeout. Throw with a nice throw, and then they get Liming off the court. That's big. I believe that was Utterback that countered him there. Looking like a team throw here on the right side. Oh, and they kind of do the crisscross yeah. throw there, and I think they caught um, Bartholomew off guard there. Six Bearcats, six Buckeyes. All right, we have a, a little clarification right. here. Official's timeout. Official, yep. West telling his team, Coach Peters telling his team, back up, back up. It looks like the refs are just talking something out. And he's not happy with the call, whatever it is. We'll get clarification. I think they were pleading that it, it hit his foot and it bounced up and he caught it. Initially, he thought it hit him. Then he said he catched him. But then I thought it was a safe call, but he hit the floor first. Okay. We only got two refs, we're going down the side. The Nobody out, all right. Yep. So basically, when you have two ref discrepancies there, they just kind of, you know, call it a wash and safe instead of, you know, you know, putting momentum on either side here. Looks like it'll be Rosinski to reset first. Kemper's got a full head of steam. All right, no, no count here for the Bearcats. Team throw misses the mark by Utterback and Thomas there. Able to stop both of them. Rosinski with a little tricky throw, misses wide. No retreat. Ohio State doing a good job maintaining ball control. They just haven't taken advantage during this point quite yet. Under five to go, first half. Ohio State clinging to a one point lead here, looking to make a statement and avenge last week's loss at the Ohio Dodgeball Cup. Derek Kemper with another good block. He's very good at protecting himself despite his size. You know, usually people think big men are big, are big targets, but he's really good at getting low and blocking for himself. Absolutely. I would not solo throw Jacob Weber. Yeah, I'd be careful about that. That was uh, the junior Snyder. 
Little Buckeyes making that throw there. Brings back in Robbie Mitchell. Rookie of the month last month, Robbie Mitchell. So Ohio State's got to be careful now. Clock advantage Cincinnati, so they should maybe use the clock. Ooh, very, very close throw there. Almost the ball's over in my opinion. We got about two minutes left in this half. Brandon again with another well-placed throw. We're gonna say his name a lot today. Yeah, already have in the first half here. He's really, between him and Liming, they put the team on their back. But if you're the Buckeyes now, under three minutes to kill, that should be your goal. Get, keep this lead going into half, and that's just, McGinn again. Textbook McGinn. Beautiful timing, take it out. Jacob Grow, the sophomore, that's inexperience there. Grow got caught sleeping. Looks like a timeout, Ohio Cincinnati. State. Timeout. Cincinnati thought maybe they got a balls over, but Coach Dylan Greer pulling double duty. President today helping run a tournament and coaching. He's uh, called a, a nice timeout there. I think he just wants to make sure they get this thing to half and preserve this lead, stop Cincinnati's momentum. That was a, a, a well-called timeout. Shout out, shout out to the, the coach here, Dylan Gray, for calling that timeout. Yeah, I think he wanted to alert his team of the situation here, kind of let them know, like, listen, you don't have to take this point, and now that they have the advantage, let's just get this thing, keep ball advantage, protect yourself, take it into the half. Matt Brzezinski leading the charge here for the Bearcats. Yeah, the Bearcats are peppered with great players. They've got a, a loaded, loaded uh, roster on the court right now. Uh-oh, a miscue by a couple Buckeyes and that'll relinquish ball control to Cincinnati then. Yeah, they're gonna use the count to their advantage. Bearcats pleading their case for that out, but they're not going to get it. Good block by Elijah Thomas there. And that oh. one will take him out. That's, that's McGinn, and there was a, they're calling a balls over, and Kemper is the last Buckeye standing. That's disastrous right now. Yeah, balls over and a timeout. Under two minutes to go. Cincinnati looking to knock this one up before halftime there. What a well, what a well played point by the Bearcats here, keeping their composure, well placed throws, you know, timely catches. Yeah, and what you don't see too often, I mean, you see it fairly often, but at a crunch time like this, what you're seeing it, uh, a couple outs via disarming them. So that's when, uh, again, we'll keep trying to explain the rules as we go through and make sure everybody knows what's going on. If you have a ball in your hand to block with, and you successfully block, but essentially you lose control of your blocking ball, that's called a disarm, and the the blocker is out in that case. So we saw two Buckeyes back to back get disarmed there. You don't see that very often there. The Bearcats, they're not gonna complain, they'll take it. It usually happens too when you're holding two balls and it's normally your non-dominant hand that it falls out of. So real quick, while we got a lull in the action here, we gave you those scores from the first round of game. Okay, so Elijah Thomas will still be in. Before, there was a ball's over before he got disarmed. Before that, uh, we got Penn State 10-0 over uh, Cleveland State, Was, uh, Wisconsin Platteville Pioneers 5-0 over Kent State, and then Akron 8-0 over Kentucky. So that was from our second slate of games. So we are in slate number three. And 
Jason Holman will start them. Bearcats moving right to left. We'll see what they dial up. They get Kemper and Thomas. Big bang, boom, done. Great team throws. It's going into half. 1-1. One, one. This is the kind of matchup we expected from these two teams. Great time. Again, Jason this, Holman this is a rematch of the championship uh, ODC match. Uh, quick out there by Brandon McGinn on uh, Junior Snyder here on, on the Buckeye squad. Um, UC looking to carry the momentum they had from that second point into the new half. We will get the we will get the official clock and score updated on on our uh, scoreboard right now. It is knotted at one apiece, despite what you're seeing on the screen at the moment. Ohio State with ball control, team throw. That takes out Will Hyatt. Uh, Derek Kemper and Ethan Lempool here, a well-oiled machine on, on our side here. Ooh, ball's wow, colliding ball's there. Colliding. Ben Dardia with a nice kill at the top of your screen gets Bartholomew who was going for that loose ball. I haven't said his name much today, but keep an eye out for him. Yeah, he's one of those just very sound, all-around good players. Not the flashy guy on the team, so that's why he doesn't really get his name called a ton. Great stop by Matt Rosinski on the wall ball there to keep that ball. And now you, you see the Buckeyes have kind of shifted their play style to kind of adopt the wall ball because they have that advantage on their side now. Two traded throws. Miller takes out Ziles there. Uh, Ohio State with a one man advantage on the Bearcats here, 11 to 10. There'll be no count for Cincinnati right now, so Ohio State will have a full shot clock to set something up. Team throw gets Engelman. Looks like both throws hit Engelman. It was a little bit of a meat shield there for Lyman. You see a lot of teams do that with their impact players, and, and Lyman's very valuable to keep on the court, and uh, Engelman's a good catcher, so they, they played the odds there. Another, uh, another tall guy who's really good at getting low and blocking for himself, Brett Liming. Great stop by Eli Campbell there. Let's keep ball on their side. Ohio State played a little kind of different transition there. Kemper ran up as if he was going to be like going for a uh, throw in transition just to back Cincinnati off and give Lemko like an easy look at a good throw. Ohio State getting a good bounce back with one of them there and then draws a throw from McGinn on the cross. Eight Bearcats left. A little pump fake action at the bottom of your screen here. Great stop by Weber. Thunder, thunderous throw from Ryan Ginsburg. Yep. Finds its way into our booth here. No harm, no foul though. right in front of us here. Another good good throw by the Ohio State Buckeyes and they've got everything going their way right now. Cincinnati on their heels again. Oh, tough luck bounce to the Buckeyes. Ohio State definitely taking control of the neutral zone at this point in the match. Just missed him again with a well-timed team throw there. Reset by Matt Rosinski. They have no count now. They have two balls on their side. And that one gets Rosinski, finds the mark with another good team throw. Wow, 
Timing will throw. Good protection by Robbie Mitchell there. Kemper just misses the mark on Robbie Mitchell. Weber with a little change piece there. Bounces in front of Miller. So Weber, that's a rare missed catch by him. He got caught reaching a little bit, still within his radius, but. And nice catch Dardia by Ben Dardia. Low catch. That was a well placed spot by Robbie Mitchell, but Dardia knew it was coming and got low for it. Down goes McGinn. We're seeing a ball's over uh, against Cincinnati here. Just didn't get a throw off in time. So that leaves Campbell and Liming as the last two Bearcats standing here. It's not a timeout. OSU will have to get set up right away. They elect not to use one here. Kemper leads the charge with a thunderous pump fake. Couldn't reel in that catch. Liming almost had it. Campbell almost got crossed. And Ohio State takes the lead 2 nothing or 2-1, to one, excuse me. Another well-played point by Ohio State. They clearly saw something on the film from last week that, that tipped them off on what they needed to do. A note to all the teams out there, you gotta watch game film. You gotta be students of the game to be good at the game. Why don't we just put the phone up there? So we'll see what UC dials up here. They've been an incredibly resilient team and usually responds in a situation like this as they did in the first half. So we apologize for uh, some of the feed issues here. Uh, our camera, our main camera up on the tripod has been cutting out. Uh, in and out, we, we can't quite figure it out. We do have a backup, so we, we should never lose the video. Hey, our camera is overheating a little bit, so. All right, Bearcats and Buckeyes going at it. Point number four, second half. A couple traded throws, but nobody finds the mark just yet. Zinski takes a big shot to the chest on the counter from Miller, or no, sorry, that was Kemmer there. Freshman standout. You can tell how much of an impact Kemmer has. It's taken him less than one season to take over manning that corner position. Absolutely, absolutely. A little bit of a miscue by the Buckeyes. They got lucky that they got these bounce backs. They gotta be careful on these high resets. They're not in the legit throw zone. Team throw gets Weber. So you got Rosinski and Weber, two impact players for the Bearcats on the sideline. Lemkul and Hyatt just traded some throws there, but neither one, neither one getting it out. from the middle, so that's a big out. He's buried in the outline now. Let's see how Cincinnati resets here. 
I'm cool with a big throw, and then Kemper gets out. Hyatt got, got out in that exchange as well, so a couple of younger impact players. Yeah, I'm not sure you want that trade here. You know, I mean, Kemper's an impact player, but with the man advantage, you gotta, you gotta try to eliminate trades as much as you can. And Campbell gets taken out there. Yeah, if you're Cincinnati now, you can't afford a trade. All right, so Hallman deferring to the other, uh, the Penn State referee on the other side there, saying it bounced. No instant replay here, so play on. Nice restraint there on this side by uh, Ryan Engelman, not to, not, not to charge up without any help. That's another veteran player understanding we need to get ball control back and play our style. Kemmer and McGinn get taken out. Uh, Kemmer looks like he's, he's still in. So maybe Plus it was Miller. I can hear Wes Peters say I'm embarrassed for you. I thought somebody was out on that exchange as well. Yeah, but it looked like to me as well, but you know, it's, a, it's at ref's discretion. Yep. We're at the wrong angle to make that call, and yeah. frankly, we're here to talk about the game, not make those calls. So here we go. Oh. Down goes Mitchell. So next throw, Bearcats are down on the 10 clock again. Watch out for Skiba. He's one of those veteran players on the Bearcats here, and he'll, he's been known to make a catch or two in his day. Oh yeah, absolutely, keeping his team in a lot of points. Former uh, OU Bear, or uh, Bobcat, current Cincinnati Bearcat. Yeah. Ohio Bobcat. Yes. Okay, there we go. But meanwhile, as we sort out the school mascots, Campbell gets taken out. Woo. Couple high throws, just missing the mark here. All right, nice, uh, nice reset there by Tyler Schaefer. Keeps the count alive for the Bearcats. Let's see what OSU cooks up here. by Miller. Schaefer didn't see that one coming at all. I'm cool with the long cross after Miller or Kemmer made that throw. Excuse me. Skiba got caught having to try to bail out his teammate who missed the reset throw and hung one. He's not happy. Down goes Ziles, leaving just Engelman. So I believe first in the queue is Bartholomew. If not, it's Rosinski, so that would be big. Engelman does not have a count, a lone Bearcat. He's a good catcher. You know he's going to sell out for one. Ginsburg using the wall. Again, some mutiny on mutiny action here. Engelman safe. Ryan Ginsburg secures that point with a catch. Just like that, wow. Ohio State all over Cincinnati, three to one here. And Cincinnati's got to find a way to get back into this. Clock's not a factor yet. They can get points quick in this kind of newer format, but they got to play with purpose here and try to get back into it. Try to hold on to that number one ranking right now. Again, it's been miscommunication and uh, kind of errant throws that are keeping Ohio State in this. I mean, Ohio State is just not making mistakes right now. Yeah, you got to give Ohio State a lot of credit. They're playing mostly very sound, mistake-free dodgeball at the moment. Uh, even when they made a mistake, uh, they almost had a balls over, and then yep. they got desperate and made about three throws. They got yep. super lucky and got two of them to bounce right back, so it was yep. very much a no harm, no foul type situation. Yeah, exactly. 
So, so basically, if you're in the Cincinnati huddle at this point, you got to think to to communicate with your team. You know, you know, be aware of the count. We had a couple balls over early on, and and the, the points that kind of you know fluctuated things. But you know, they're not out of it by any means. You know, Cincinnati's a great team, but it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to to stop this steamrolling train that is the OSU Buckeyes right now. Yeah, you knew they'd come out hot after uh, after losing on their home court last week. I'm not sure anybody could have predicted this. As a matter, you know, Cincinnati was favored for a reason coming in. Number one team in the land, number two in the power rankings, I believe. Hopefully I have that right. You are correct. All right, so Ohio State getting the better of the run up again. All right, nice pump fake by uh, Brett Liming to protect his player there, Robbie Mitchell, who tripped in the uh, in their opening rush. All right. So McGinn gets out early there. That's a big get for them. He's really been maybe the Bearcats' best player outside of Liming. State was getting late in the shot clock there. Ginsburg makes the throw and then team catch. Oh, and oh. trying to catch him sleeping. He was aware of it the whole time. Yeah, I don't know if Kemmer actually meant for that ball to get to the second level there. You know, it got yeah. past that first line of defense players, didn't touch anybody. Lyman just said, hey, look what I found. I'm not sure if Lyman caught that ball or if that ball caught him. Lyman will send one right in between Lemko and Ke uh, Kemper. Missed catch by Gro there. Rosinski will get credit for that kill. And this might just have to be the way Cincinnati's got to get a point here, just grind them down, grind them down one at a time. Yeah, keep aggressive, stay in the neutral zone. They're not really giving OSU much of a shot here. Liming and Engelman working right in front of the screen here. Drew a couple of throws and had Kemper and Lemko kind of dead to rights and missed, so. Bartholomew will be the one that returns fire and Cincinnati will retreat, but they're not going to give... You notice Cincinnati's playing up higher. They're not giving Ohio State the neutral zone. Yeah, I think that's a good play for them at this time to stay aggressive and try to win these points. This is a fun little battle between Liming and Kemper right now. Yeah, two of Ohio's best here duking it out. Rosinski blocked that one in front of us, but. All right, six balls to four in favor of UC. Seven balls now. Couple throws, nobody home, but UC gets a good bounce back. Finally get Kemper on that third one. Cincinnati thought they got him earlier than that. Finally the ref called him there. Elijah Thomas draws the throw, so Cincinnati only has one ball on their side. It's in the trusty hands of Jacob Weber at the moment. Big team throw. Coach West Peters pleading to please use your brain, you know, you know, use your strategy. They only had two balls, they had no count, and they got rid of one of them. So we got
got about nine minutes to go on the official scorer's clock, so we'll try to get that synced up with what we're showing on the screen right now. Clock's starting to become a factor for the Bearcats. They got to get two points in nine minutes. So they've got the player advantage right now, and they just can't seem to wrestle the ball advantage away from Ohio State. Cole and Ginsburg both making a throw there. Ben Dardia leading the charge now for the Buckeyes. Playing in the center with uh, Captain Ryan Ginsburg. Big cross shot by Weber on Dardia there. Finds its way to bounce back, and so Cincinnati just cannot wrestle ball control away from Ohio State. Credit Ohio State for that. And every one of those throws eats up another 14 to 15 seconds. Nice stop there by Robbie Mitchell. The Bearcats finally get a stop. Still no count, no pressure on there, so. So they'll pull back here. Now the Buckeyes come up again. And that's better for the Bearcats. They draw two throws out of that and they can finally make a move. Yep. Ball control still with the Buckeyes, but not as big. Lyman gets out there, kind of runs himself into it out. And he can see he's visibly frustrated there. It's been a frustrating game so far. He doesn't want this Ohio State team to have any sort of bragging rights over them right now. Big catch by Matt Rosinski here, brings back in Will Hyatt. Yep. Lyman's still first in the queue though, so he's got to check his emotions. They're not out of it. No, not by any means. And a catch by Eli Campbell. Campbell here brings that Lundpool. And Lyman's going to go right back in. Him and Wes were talking it out. But... Team catch. Team catch and a one, a one arm catch from Isaiah Montgomery here. A one arm catch, folks. And now we're down to just like that. Three Buckeyes here. And Ohio State's going to call a timeout. Ohio State does not want this one to get out of hand. Even if they lose. Hey, what's the time? 5.42. Brett, Brett! Well, that's a good timeout by Ohio State here. Clock is starting to become a factor for Cincinnati. Cincinnati's got to get this point point quick, capitalize, so they've got enough time to tie it, potentially. Exactly, exactly. If you're yeah. Ohio State, even if you lose and you take two more minutes off the clock, though, that's that's a huge, big difference. Huge. Cincinnati's trying to get a clarification on the shot clocks. Cincinnati will have a full shot clock here too, coming out of the timeout. Uh, Utterback, Thomas and Prohaska. Count for Ohio State now. 
Rosinski quickly takes out Thomas on a solo throw there. That's dangerous. He's a catcher. Absolutely. Oh, wow, and a catch by Brett Lining. Takes out outer back. That one almost squeaked through. Oh, but. yeah. Team catch, doesn't really do a whole lot here. All right, he never had control of the ball. Oh, Breyer just is. misses the catch. We'll get the officials clock, but that did not take Cincinnati much time. Yeah, we apologize. We'll get. 457. 457. So just under five minutes to go. Cincinnati threatening to tie this game up. 4.57. Under five to go here. Cincinnati not out of it. They're going to have to play with a little more, uh, little more tempo here. Yeah. But they can certainly tie this one up. And I would love to see an overtime of these two teams. I have yet to commentate an overtime match. So selfishly, I think we deserve it. I think the fans deserve it. Jason Hallman going to get us started in just a second here. Ohio State's on the baseline. You see breaking the huddle right now. You got to think Cincinnati's missing Corey Heitman at this moment. A little bit, yeah. Hit the way he plays with tempo. He's one of their faster players. A lot of energy. They're missing him in this moment right now. A but key, A key player on the baseline, Tyler Schaefer. I'm not sure if he's injured or is having some, uh, some problems with his forearm gripping the ball. So Corey Heitman's at work, apparently. Yeah. Sad, sad excuse to miss a tournament. And Cincinnati got the better of the run up in terms of ball advantage, and that's huge. So, so far, not able to capitalize. They made a few throws. About 30 seconds gone by here since the point started, 4.30 to go. You gotta think they just won a shooting gallery here. Can't, you cannot lose ball yep. advantage, though. And Cincinnati has obviously decided they're just going to go high line. with a catch on, on their throw line. Almost a team catch, but down goes Ziles on the other side. So Cincinnati's going to play high line for the final four minutes here, meaning they are going to stay up at their throw line and force Ohio State to either throw them out or get them back. Oh. Oh, that's a good tag. Another good tag. The liming stayed up and Kemper made him pay for that one at close range. Hey, you're still in. What happened? They, they, they were arguing a There's call a right there. play stoppage here. It appears liming may still be in. Liming may still be I'll, in. I'll, I'll handle it. If you guys were arguing oh, that oh, call, oh, Brett's still in. We got hit after that call. the reps and captains and coaches here, so we'll get this sorted out in just a second. This is a pivotal point in the matchup for Cincinnati right now. I have to advocate. Uh, because that play happened before that play. If we're arguing that play, that's when it's next time. That's when I make sure of it. So it looks like there might have been an official's timeout. They were trying to discuss a play near like the, the far side of the monitor here. And because there, that would have been when the play is dead, the play with Kemper and Liming would have never occurred. So Liming gets to stay, and that's a huge break for the Bearcats right now. Because uh, that, that, that play happened before it that play. Matter when the play happens, you want to time out after. Yeah. Okay, so they are going to, in fact, say Liming is out because the officials did not officially stop the play or time was not called until after that occurred. So 
It was a disarming and then a possible catch, but the ball had hit the ground first. So, nevertheless, we're back. 3.30 to go here. Second half, Cincinnati trying to complete this comeback and force overtime. Ohio State clinging to a one-point lead now. All right, quick out by uh, Ethan Lenthal here to get Will Hyatt on the baseline, or on the uh, his outline. A little bit of a high throw. He didn't really need to get the kill there. He could have just dirted it. Yeah. But Ohio State, I think, wants an exclamation point. Ben Dardia takes out Weber, and they might With just get it here. stamp to his chest. Cincinnati with no balls on their side and seven players. That's a good stop there to regain uh, those two balls. And Cincinnati's going to go high line again now with everybody. Coach Wes Peters uh, barking orders to his squad here. Ohio State maintaining ball control is the key to this right now for them. They, pressure's not even on them to, to do anything really, and they're not allowing Cincinnati to do anything by maintaining the ball no, control. They just have to play with their clock and keep, keep that. Kemmer draws a couple of throws. Meanwhile, Campbell had gotten out, so we've only got six Bearcats left on the court. One more, and they're down to 10. And they'll really have to play fast. Absolutely. That's a great hit by Robbie Mitchell. Hits the knee of Lenthal when he dropped for that catch. Two minutes to go. Officials are saying two minutes, so there might be a little more time than we're showing on the monitor. That's OK. Stick with us. We got a nail biter going to the end here. Rosinski's out. He'll take a very slow walk off the court. Greeted by his coach, Wes. Gives him high five, low five. Engelman with an honest out there. Kemper gets him. It looks like Ohio State's gonna do just enough to preserve this one point victory here and get a little revenge. I'm sure they'd love to have the trophy in Columbus, but this is a nice consolation for them. Yeah, absolutely. Knocking off the number one team is gonna be huge for them. One minute to go. Big cross. Down goes Robbie Mitchell. And then Dylan Greer calls a timeout. Robbie Mitchell is still out. The, the timeout was called after he got hit. Credit Ohio State, whatever they saw on film from last week's loss, they, they definitely parlayed that into a victory today. Played sound dodgeball all day so far. All game, I should say. Yeah, a couple near perfect points for the Buckeyes. Yeah, and every time Cincinnati, when they did take a point or they really got back into it, I mean, they had to earn every ounce of it. They had to claw oh, and scrape. Nothing came easy, even when Cincinnati did get points. So. It's a big confidence builder for Ohio State. I think they were already a very confident team, but we're back underway here. Under a minute to go. Coming out of the timeout, Ohio State's gonna push up right to left. Three, two, one, three, two. Now they'll coordinate, and oh, team throw finds the mark on Montgomery there. And Skiba, that's back-to-back -back face shots on the Bearcats. Again, the last man standing. Brandon the catch, the catch. catch. Brings that back in by Tholomew. Yep. So again, Ohio State's gonna retreat now and force the Bearcats up. The Bearcats still have to try to get this point. And that's it. That's the match. Ohio State finishes them off. What a match. What a great game. Pretty well-balanced 
You know, it was a one-point game last week, three to two, comes right back three to two this yeah. week. Credit Ohio State. You know, with Cincinnati, you don't want to make excuses. They were missing Corey Heitman. In a tight game like that, a player like that can matter, but Ohio State's not going to apologize. You never apologize for a win in this league. Exactly. And listen to the Ohio State Buckeyes celebrating this one. You think they wanted it or what? Oh, yeah, for sure. 